these are notes 4.5. Um, we're going to do three things. We're going to use the general multiplication rule to calculate probabilities for AND statements. We're going to use a tree diagram to see what possible outcomes there are and their probabilities. We're also going to yeah, calculate the conditional probabilities using these tree diagrams. Okay. So we've already kind of gone over OR statements, right? If something is A or B, we said it was probability of A plus the probability of B minus probability of A and B happening. So, so how do you find this part? How do you find the A and B happening? Okay, so here's, a, here's an example. About 55% of high school students participate in a high school athletic team, okay? So if I use a tree diagram for this, there's one of two things. Either they play high school sports or people don't play high school sports. Okay, it's saying here that 55% of the people play high school sports. That means one minus that would be 45% of the people don't play high school sports. Okay, now it says of those that go on to play, roughly 5% of the athletes that play high school sports go on to play at the college level. So if they, if they play the high school sports, they go on to play in college. 5% of the time and they don't okay these people would not either because they don't even play in high school okay so what percent of people play in college like of the whole high school population well what we would do is we would take the 0.55 and multiply it by the 0.05 and we get 0 0.0275 okay so this would be about 2.75% of the high school population play sports in high school, I mean college. Okay, so it's, a, it's kind of a conditional, right? So we would have right here, 55% play in high school. Of those students, 5% play in college, 95% wouldn't. Okay, so you can multiply those two things. We have this event and this event happening. So our general rule for AND statements is this. Probability of event A and event B happening is the probability of A happening times the probability of B happening given that A has already happened. Okay, so, so it's not 5% of overall, it's 5% of these playing here. Okay, let's look at another example. The Internet and Inter American Life Project found that 93% of teenagers use the Internet and that 55% of the teens have posted a profile on social networking site. Okay, So first we're looking at all teenagers and they are either, they either use the Internet or they don't use the Internet. Okay. So it says that 93% of teenagers use the internet. So 93% use the internet. That would be 7% for, for those that don't use the internet. Okay, it says of those that use the internet, 55% have posted a, a profile on a social networking site. So on uh, social media or not on social media, it said 55%, right, 55, yep. If they're online, 55% of them have a social media, media profile, which means there would be 45 of, of those people that do not have social media website. Okay, so we want to find the probability that a randomly selected student uses the internet and has a profile. Okay, probability of them on the internet and have a social media social media profile. Okay, so we're going to take them and multiply them together. So 93 and 95, gives you 0.5115. So that's the probability if I ch just select somebody randomly um, that they will be on the internet and have a social media site. Okay, so let's go to another problem. Let's, uh, any of you have the snooze problem? I think my son's starting to develop one. Um, anyway, he, she hits snooze on her alarm 60% of school days. 
If she hits the snooze alarm, there's a 70% chance she's going to make it to her first clock class on time. If she doesn't hit snooze right away, there's a 90% probability that she makes it to class on time. Okay? So, a random day, she will either hit snooze 60% of the time or not hit snooze, meaning 40% of the time, because that to be 100%. If she hits the snooze, she'll be on time 70% of the time and 30% of the time late. If she doesn't hit the snooze, she's on time 70% of the time and late 10% of the time. Okay? So, if I want to know what's the probability she's going to be late? Let's figure this out. This is a good one. So she can be late here or here, right? So probability of late could be that she hits the snooze and she's late. And that down here, she doesn't hit the snooze and she's late. Okay, so there's two scenarios where she can be late. So 0 0.6 times 0 0.3, this happens 18% of the time. This happens 4% of the time. So together, she is late 22% of the time. Okay? So hit snooze and late 18% of the overall time. And hit snooze late, doesn't hit snooze late, would be 4% of the time. So those together, she's late 22% of the time. Okay? Here's another problem for us. Let's try and work this out together, okay? Try and do it yourselves if you can. The Kaiser Family Foundation recently study, released a study about the influence of media in the lives of young people aged 8 to 18. In the study, 17% of the youths were classified as light media users. Okay, so I'm going to do the word chart here. Some were classified as light media users. That was 17%. 62% were classified as moderate. And then 21% were classified as heavy users of media. Okay? Of the light users, so of these light users, 74% were good. A's and B's. While only 68% were good for moderate people. And 52% we're heavy users, of the heavy users, okay? So, who got the bad grades? Um, let's see, that would be, what, 26%? And bad grades of this, of the moderate group, would be 32%. And bad grades of the heavy, heavy usage would be 48% of the people, okay? See where you fit in. Do you get, do you, are you a light user of media, moderate or heavy, and are you getting good or bad grades, okay? So, there's our tree diagram of the process. Find the probability, so we want to find probability that the person gets good grades. Okay, good grades overall. So we want this, they get good grades, they get good grades, and they get good grades, right? So we have to multiply these together. So 0 0.17 times 0.74 gives us 0.1258. This good grades is 0.62 and 0.68. Okay, that gives us 0.4216. And these are 21% times 52%. And that gives us 0.1092. So of the overall population, we have a little over 12% of the people who are light users who get good grades. Moderate users, good grades would be about 42% of the people. And heavy users would be that good, good grades are 10% of the people, almost 11. Okay, so the overall good grades would be the tw this, those people plus those people plus those people.
Okay, so that gives us, okay, almost 66% of the people get good grades, okay? So the people, if we would get the, may figure out the people that get bad grades, you take one minus this, that'd be what, 40, um, 34%, okay, about 34% of the people would get bad grades, okay? So the tree diagram really helps it, makes it useful. Okay, here's another problem for us. Okay, many women choose to have an annual mammogram to screen for breast cancer after the age of 40. A mammogram isn't foolproof. Sometimes the test suggests that a woman has breast, ca breast cancer when she really doesn't, which is a false positive. And other times the tests say that a woman doesn't have breast cancer when she actually does a false negative. And that can happen with the coronavirus test we've been having on too, right? And other things. Okay, suppose we know the following information about breast cancer and mammograms, okay? So either a woman has breast cancer or they don't. And then if they have breast cancer, they will either test positive or negative. And if they don't have breast cancer, they can either test positive or negative. Okay, so that's kind of our, our format here. We're saying that 1% of the women aged 40 or over have breast cancer. So 1% have breast cancer, 99% of the people do not have breast cancer. For women who have breast cancer, so of these people, the probability of getting a negative result is 3%. So the probability of getting a positive result would be 97%. So that's good, right? If I have it, I want it, to, want it to detect that it's positive. For the women who don't have breast cancer, the probability of a positive is 6%, and that means 94%. So most of the time, if you don't, you could test positive, but yeah. Okay, what would be worse, a false positive or a false negative? Think of fault. I think this would be worse, right? If you don't have it, but you test positive, because then you still don't have it. But here, if you have it and test negative, you just keep living life and cancer gets worse. But anyway, we want to figure up a randomly selected woman, age 40, from the population tests positive for breast cancer. What's the probability that she has breast cancer? Okay. Okay, so if she tests positive, what's the probability she actually has it? Okay, so we know the probability of testing positive. If she, no, sorry, given if she tests positive, right? That would be what's given to us. If they test positive, right, that's what's given. What's the probability they actually have it? Okay. If they test positive, how many, how, what's the percentage of actually having it? So we gotta figure some stuff out here. First, we gotta think about testing positive. What percentage of the people test positive, okay? Well, that would be this and this one and this one, right? So if I take 0 0.01 times 0 0.97, I get 0 0.0097. And then here, 0.99, times 0 0.06, 0 0.0594. So of all the people who test from everybody, okay, everybody who takes a test, we have 0 0.0097 plus 0 0.0594. If I add these two together, we have a total of almost 7% of the people that test positive, okay? Adding those two together, we get how many people test positive. Now, of those people who test positive, what percent actually have it? Okay, the people that have it would be the 0 0.0097. So if I take that divided by that, whoops, I added too many zeros in there. Okay. So 0 0.0097, we get 0 0.14. So 
So think, of, think about what this means. If somebody's testing positive, only 14% of the people who test positive actually have the breast cancer. That's not a great test. <laughs> okay, but that's kind of what happens, right? Um, which is actually kind of good. Like if, I, if I'm gonna test positive, um, I would like it to be a low percentage of time that I'm actually not gonna have it. Well, it's breast cancer, I'm not gonna have it anyway, I'm a male, but anyway, okay? Um, okay, so let's look at another one here. Okay. Lactose intolerance causes difficulty in digesting dairy products like milk um, and stuff like that. Um, it is particularly common among people of African and Asian ex ex ancestry. In the United States, not including other groups and people who consider them to belong to one or more group. So 82% of the population is white. Okay, so we're gonna start with our whole US population. And we have 82% are white. 14% is black. And 4% is Asian. Okay, so of the whites, 15% of whites are lactose intolerant. Where was that? 15%. And of blacks, 70% were lactose intolerant. And of the Asians, 90% were lactose intolerant. Okay, so we're going to construct the Venn diagram here. Um, I mean, not Venn diagram, tree diagram. So lactose intolerant or not, okay, that would be 85%, right? And 30% of blacks are not lactose intolerant, and 10% of Asians are not. Okay, so there's our chart. Okay, so find the probability that a person is lactose intolerant. So probability that somebody is lactose intolerant, just if I pick a random person, we don't know what what race they are, we have to figure up these areas here, right? Those that are lactose intolerant. So 0.82 times 0.15 gives you 0.123. Of the blacks who are lactose, or 0.14 times 0.7, 0 0.098. And of the Asians who are lactose intolerant, 0.04 times 0.9, okay? So I wanna add these three together, 0 0.123 plus 0 0.098 plus 0 0.036. So those that are lactose intolerant is a little bit over a quarter of our population, okay? A little bit of a, a fourth of people, okay? Given that a person is lactose intolerant, what's the probability he or she is Asian? Okay, so for this one, we're thinking, given that they're lactose intolerant, what's the probability that they're Asian? Okay, so we're looking at all the lactose intolerant people. So all the lactose intolerant people were that percentage of the population. And of those, how many of these were Asian? So it was 0 0.036 out of that population. gives you 14%. So if I pick somebody, I know they're lactose intolerant, there's about a 14% chance that they're also gonna be Asian. Okay. So we talked about a couple things. The general rule to calculate po probabilities, okay, is this idea here, we take A times B, and that's what we're doing every time, right? We're taking the probability of A times the probability of B, okay? We talked about the tree diagram, and we talked about the conditional probabilities within those, finding those. Okay, so that's lesson 4.5.